Hey, what's up, fellas? Belton here. Uh, got a cool little crafting video for you. I've been working on a few things uh, these past few days in Necropolis League. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today, I think, is uh, a super, super uh, well-kept secret, so to speak. Uh, something that um, really uh, is uh, an older tech, but a, a really cool and efficient way of doing it. Uh, and so what we're going to be talking about today um, is crafting jewels for the Adorned. Uh, similar to last league, the Adorned is... As always, incredibly powerful. Um, there are a few new things this league, though, that make crafting for these incredibly, incredibly cheap and incredibly efficient in a way that was not available last league. So I'm going to show you start to finish how to do that today. Um, just for some examples here, um, I've got a, a few of these jewels on currently. You see we've got one, two, sorry, one, two, three. Is it just the three I have on at the moment? Yeah. But you can see this one, for example, this has 82% crit multi, 7% attack speed. This one has 82% crit multi, 12% damage, 5% RMR. This one just has 80% crit multi. So you can see there we're getting like over 250% crit multi, attack speed, whatever. The three of those jewels combined cost me less than 20 divines to craft. And uh, that's what's really special about this. Uh, some of it involves a meta shift that has happened um, with Necropolis League. But more so than that, um, there's just some new crafting mechs. So I'm going to show you guys from start to finish. I lined up a few things here just so I can kind of talk you through the process. So um, this league, uh, there is a massive, massive, I wouldn't say deficit, but there's not a lot of synthesis mods. Or sorry, triple uh, implicit synthesis mods available compared to last leagues, or uh, tri try tri triple implicit synthesis items available compared to last league. Um, and that is because Cortex does not drop uh, triple synth uh, items anymore. Um, so people are just like randomly getting them and throwing them up. Uh, if you look right here, I have a trade uh, search. Um, this is for uh, three implicit um, three implicit uh, jewels. And you can see there's only eight of them online and quite a few of them actually are mine. So uh, what you want to do this league, first of all, um, is uh, you're going to have to go to uh, the harvest uh, bench and manually synthesize your items. So just type synth here, and you can see that it is 5,000 Vivid Life Force and one Sacred Life Force. Uh, luckily right now, Vivid Life Force are 6,600 to 1, and Sacreds are like 0 0.4 div each. Please uh, don't message me, guys. I'm recording a video um, for the folks on Twitch. Um so yeah, the uh, Vivid Life Force 6600 to 1 and the Sacred Life Force is 0 0.4 divs to 1, uh, or sorry, 0 0.4 divines yeah, per 1 Sacred. So super cheap, um, not too hard to get it. It's about a 1 in 15 chance or so to get um, the 3 Implicits using the Harvest Synthesis. And you can use that for any base type too that is not exclusive to Jewels. Um, because there are not many people, or there are not many Synthesis items available in general though, um, anything that is kind of correlated to synth um, is super cheap just because, uh, you know, people aren't using them. Um, so, for example, Vivid Vultures are still only one divine each, despite being like two weeks into the league. Typically, they'd probably be around three divs each right now. Um, and so, you know, uh, that directly correlates with the fact that, you know, there aren't all these, this abundance of uh, synthesis items. So, um, if you want to, you can manually synthesize these jewels yourself. Um, as you can see here, I have an entire tab of them. I thought I would... Uh, you know, maybe flood the market a little bit with the boys. Um, but uh, what you can also do, um, some tech here behind this, uh, traditional jewels, so by that I mean Cobalt, Crimson, Viridian, and Prismatic jewels, uh, they don't actually have item levels or tiers uh, requirements for the um, for the modifiers on them. So um, Abyss jewels, for example, they have different tiers and there are different item level requirements for certain mods. Um, but on these, on a, a traditional jewel, uh, every modifier is available to roll on item level one, um, as same for synthesis. Um, and what, what's incredibly cool about that is because with the adorned, right, uh, we want to be getting a corrupted implicit. And the only thing that is item level restricted actually are corrupted implicits. So if you get a jewel, uh, you can see here, item level 32, item level 32, 26, 20, blah, blah, blah. If you can get some jewels that are below item level 33, uh, there are 21 total corrupted implicits, um, and because the adorned is scaling anything with an integer value, right, you want to have something that has a numerical value attached to it, not something like corrupted blood, right, because it doesn't get any benefit from uh, the adorned. And uh, all of the mobs, or sorry, mobs, all the mods on um, jewels that uh, are like, you cannot be hindered, you can uh, not be impacted by corrupted blood, blah, 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 all of those ones are the ones that have item level requirements. 
all of the quote unquote good ones. So like 2% RMR, 5% damage, 10% crit, um, 1% Ellie pen, 7% ailment effect, etc. 5% AOE. All of those you can get at item level one. And since the jewels don't have tiers and they don't have um, item level requirements for the modifiers on them, there is no downside to that. And it actually makes hitting the adorned easier. So the, the one thing uh, that we have going for us in making this much cheaper is that um, if you want to use vultures, vultures super cheap um there's not a lot of synth mods available uh but life force is very cheap so manually synthesizing this is no problem uh number two is that um you can item level restrict traditional jewels very very easily um and that actually makes it more effective now number three um is that uh this league there has been a pretty big meta change up for myself playing a bow build uh, you know rather than tornado shot being the be all end all, all as always uh, Tornado Shot is actually for 21%, 21% currently of all characters in the, the league are uh, using a bow as their main item, and only 5% of bow users are using Tornado Shot. Uh, the ones that are most common are uh, Lightning Arrow and Elemental Hit. And Elemental Hit and Lightning Arrow are both tagged with Lightning, um, a Lightning skill. Uh, elemental Hit is actually tagged as Fire, Cold, or Lightning, but... Um, a lightning skill would be best there probably i mean you could also pick cold because cold can also be used for ice shot but lightning arrow is more more popular than ice shot but that does mean though that we can get access to um critical strike multiplier with uh cold skills or um lightning skills which is a prefix only on classic jewels right and that is actually 18 percent, which means if you have a perfect adorned you actually get 45 percent crit multi just from that one modifier not to mention, you can also get elemental skills as a suffix, which is another 15%. So that's 35% there. Uh, sorry, 37%. So just from those two things alone, not including the 10% more multi you can get from a synth implicit, you can get 82% crit multi from just those two mods that are very easy to get. Um, and you can get another uh, 10 from uh, global crit multi. So that's 92% crit multi. And it's super easy to do. Um, and because those are the most popular skills in the league, there should be a good market for them if you want to do this for profit or if you're playing a bow build. Very easy way to scale your damage. Uh, you can see here my character is only three days old. I just started it. Um, my gear is not exceptional except for my bow, which I'll cover in a, uh, another video. And you can see here uh, I don't even, you know, I don't I don't have an excessive amount of crit multi on the tree or anything like that. And I've already got. Uh, and I'm not using a one passive voices or any large cluster jewels. And I've already got close to 600% crit multi. Um, so if I add in a one passive voices there, right, we could add another 200% multi, another one passive voices here. Uh, we could have actually realistically about a thousand percent crit multi. Pretty crazy. Um, especially because elemental hit as well. A lot of them are using secrets of suffering, which means brittle gives you a, a straight shot basically to, uh, to crit cap. So crit multi should scale very effectively. Um, but yes, that is another very cool element of this. And so, um, that's how you're going to source them. But then the biggest and most important part of this craft, and as to why this kind of made me a little sad ish, a little sad ish. Uh, if you guys were watching, um, me at the end of last league, I spent 100 mirrors crafting, uh, magic adorn jewels. <coughs> and, uh, they added something this league that makes it so cheap because people are so short sighted and they are overlooking this. But Black Morrigan, one of the effects that Black Morrigan can now have, right? If you look here, a lot of people, I think, have been valuing Morrigans over the fact that they can split into three items or that they can give you a, a free six socket or a free six link. It's also pretty easy to farm them with the new scarabs. However, this is the one that we want to focus on. Apply a Hinakora's lock to a magic item. And what does it cost us? A Black Morrigan and a Krejcik Chimero. Now... Looking at this at first glance for 99.9% .9 of items, probably not super useful because who needs to use a, a lock on a magic item as opposed to just using a regular crate check, right? However, the adorned is exactly where you want to use that. Now, um, how much are we looked? How much are we talking about here, right? At the end of last league, I was paying 125 divines or something like that per Hinakor's lock when I was crafting a bow, which I'm going to make a video on shortly. Um, I paid upwards of 47 divines. I think they've actually dropped down to about 30 divs each now, right? Per per Hinakora's lock. However, if we take a look here, Black Morgan, 20 chaos, Krejcik Chimero, 170 chaos. That is 200 C, so 1.3 divines to get a Hinakora's lock on a jewel. So 
let's let's recount here, guys. We can make our own synthesis jewels for cheap. It makes it easier to corrupt them. Um, because the meta has shifted, you can get a shit ton of multi. Uh, and they're basically free to craft because people are undervaluing Black Morgans like crazy. Not to mention, Kraychik Chimerals now have 30% chance to not be consumed, 40% chance not be consumed, 20%, 10%, or 0%, right? Now, assuming most of the people that are farming Kraychiks are going to be doing so with the points on the tree, um, we can average that out since the trade site does not tell us specifically, um, you know, if it's like what the 40%, 30%, whatever, it's kind of a shot in the dark. For myself, what I do is I just imagine that they're equally weighted. So 0%, 10%, 20, 30, 40, add that together. That's 100%. And then you divide it by five, which means the average one will have, if you're just buying them at random um, and the person is not specifically categorizing them, which in my experience, they don't, they just kind of trade them. Um, I, I expect them to be 1.2. So for example, if I buy 100 Krejcik's, uh, in my head, I tell myself I've got 120 uses of those because on average, it'll be that. Now, of course, it can change depending on the person in specific, but um, you do, again, this is by every measure uh, a buff to Krejcik because you get more use out of them. So not only are Krejcik cheaper than they would normally be, you get a save. The price of a lock is what? Uh, 30 divines as opposed to 1.3. So what, like 125th the price. Um, and the jewels are very easy to make yourself. And you can get them super, super strong. So um, if you don't want to synthesize them yourself, you can just go ahead and search on the trade site. And you can see here, I actually stopped a couple here, just had different phases of this. Um, and then we're, we'll do the uh, the Hinakora's locking part live to end the video. Um, but this is one, for example, that I just bought on the trade site here. I bought this for 10 divines. You can see it's got, um, well, it's only two implicits, right? Not three, but it does have T1 crit multi um global crit multi which is one that i want um and it's got the spell damage while holding a shield which is not, not a bad mod i'll probably roll that off as well you could see the person put strength and um uh, rmr on there now what i would do from here is uh, i would alteration that to get the crit multi with elemental skills as you can see here and then the next stage would be for me to uh you know um i would put like say five imprints Right, I would augment and then I would uh, vivid vulture until we hit a second synth mod that we want. In this case, this is exactly what happened. You can see here we hit global crit chance. It's not the best mod, but it's not terrible. Um, it's also because I'm not using secrets of suffering. Um, it's uh, it's a good way for me to uh, get a little bit closer to that crit cap uh, without having to uh, sacrifice uh, my ailments. And then um, while you're also rolling for the vultures, you can also augment for your prefix. Right, so in this case. Uh, because I am playing Ellie hit, we have the, it does not matter if it's cold, lightning, or fire. And you can see there we hit the 18% uh, crit multi with cold skills. So uh, to this point, I, I paid 10 divines for the base jewel. Um, and then, uh, oh, sorry, actually, no, that was for that one there. This one was actually only four divines for the crit multi. Um, and then I paid, so I paid four divines for the base. I spent probably 30 chaos of alterations to get the uh, Ellie hit on there. Um, and then I used, I think three vultures to get the crit chance on. So another three divs. So we're at about seven divs. And then, um, in the process of using the imprints while changing those, I got the cold skills. So that was just added in. Um, and I was lucky because it actually didn't need a divine on the explicits. So to this point, um, let's say it's about seven divines, but let's call it like eight or nine just to, you know, give it some leeway. Even can call it 10 divs if we want. Right. So up until this phase, we're looking at about 10 divines. Um, seven to ten dips but uh now all we need to do instead of having to go use oh sorry to use the hinakora's lock we are going to go ahead and use a lock just like this bada boom and then we're going to use a blessed orbs to remove it one of the reasons why i think it's really good uh, not only is crit multi one of the harder things to get especially for attack builds um but uh crit multi um you, you want to get a synthesis implicit that you can use a blessed orb on right because you don't want to have to use a divine to get rid of the Hinakoras lock. Obviously, it'd be very expensive. Um, in this case here, it'd be 16 divines on average to get it back to the perfect roll. Um, which, as I just pointed out, would actually be double the cost it took to get this a full new jewel. Um, as an example for this, guys, you see right here how this one has 2% uh, attack speed and 0.2 attack damage leeches life. Um, obviously, the explicits are done. But if I put a lock on this, right, and we hover with the lock... And it does not give us a desired outcome. I can't use a blessed orb on this. As you see here, it'll say cannot re-roll the target's implicit mod values. 
Uh, so your only option in that case would be to just accept the Vol Orb outcome, um, to use a Regal Orb, uh, to use an Annul, um, to Divine it. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that might be it. Or I mean, I guess you could just Alteration or whatever, but you have to start from scratch at that point. Uh, actually, I guess you could use an Imprint as well, too, if you Imprint it prior. Um, but either way, the, be the best option um, here... Uh, in my opinion, get something. It doesn't have to be crit multi, but at least if one of your synthesis mods has a range on it, then that way you can very easily reset your locks without having to uh, stress through that. And it actually becomes a very smooth and uh, kind of fun process. Now, as I mentioned, um, these are... Is this one... No, okay. So the ones that I manually synthesize myself, guys, uh, like this one here, you can see, I did this myself. Uh, here's an example of a finished one, right? So I put the... I, uh, I got the crit multi on there, right? I rolled life and uh, percent uh, all res, and then um, I had the gilded fossil, and then we got the damage percent, and then I would reset it uh, like that, right? Um, but you can see this is item level 31. These ones here, 85, 85, 83, uh, because they are not item level restricted, we will be able to hit, like, you cannot be hindered, you cannot be maimed, corrupted blood, etc., etc. Um, so that means that we're going to have 21 um, corrupted implicits. Um, the ones that I personally am looking, uh, to get here, uh, the best one would be 2% RMR, um, 10% crit chance is quite good too, cause that's 25% crit chance with a door and very efficient. Um, however, if you have, um, a synthesis mod that is the same as a corrupted mod, uh, you cannot have both of them. They're mutually exclusive. The corrupted mod, if you roll it, it will replace the synthesis mod. So if we got the 10%, um, crit chance corruption, it would always replace the 10 or the 4% global crit chance uh, synth. So it'll never replace the gilded fossil. So you do want to be conscientious of that. Um, minion, minion damage is a synth mod. Like the ones that are both synth and corrupted would be minion damage, global crit chance, damage percent, area of effect. Um, I'm missing some. That's all that comes to the top of my head. There might be other ones. So you double check that um, before uh, hand. Um, but yeah, in this case here, we'll hover over, see what happens. Passivism, no problem. And then what I was talking about here, you can see all we have to do now uh, is just reset this to it. What the fuck? Well, it only takes four blessed arms on average. That one took a, a little while, but um, but we can just reset it like that each time. So much smoother process. Um, and again, golden rule, no bueno. Again, um, uh, because um, you can do these item, on item level restricted ones. Uh, for myself, the list of ones that I, I would consider good slash ones that I'd be accepting uh, would be uh, percentage damage, uh, global crit chance, 2% RMR, 1% elemental penetration, um, and perhaps 7% um, increased effective ailments, or non-damaging ailments, rather. Um, oh, there we go. 2% fizz overwhelmed with fizz reduction. Replaced the wrong mod, though. Also not one that I want. Um, but because of that, that means there's five corrupted implicits that uh, that we'd be looking for, right? Um, if it was item level restricted, that would mean you'd have a five out of seventeen. So like, what's what's that? One in three point four, right? And then a one in four times uh, one in four of all orbs gets an implicit. So three point four times four is twelve, thirteen point six, and then um, it would take uh, another one in or one in this case one in three because there's not four implicits. There's only three implicits, and we want to replace the gilded fossil. So That'd be 39, uh, 40.8. So it take 41, 41 of these on average, right? Um, so 41, uh, he, or, uh, Krejcik plus, uh, Morgans. Um, and because we get the 20%, that means it's 35 Krejciks and 40 Morgans. So we're talking 800, uh, 800 C, which is about five divs. And then, um, 40, uh, 45 divs. So our average crafting cost to finish this out exactly as we want it from start to finish is about 50 divines. To put that in perspective, if you were to do this previously, like last league with Unicorus locks and whatnot, you'd be talking um, uh, probably five to, to seven mirrors uh, to do the exact same thing. So, um, you know, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out with this video, uh, A, is just how strong uh, the Adorant is. Um because I do think that it's it's being criminally slept on. Um, and uh, B, uh, that uh, perhaps some people are severely undervaluing um, Black Morrigan uh, because it can be used for this case. Um, 
the price has pretty much directly correlated with the drop of uh, like the lowering of uh, six link prices. It seems to be that that is uh, uh, very clearly the the price driver for Morgans right now. Um, and I don't think people are paying enough attention or giving appropriate credit to the to how strong uh, that this this actually is here. Um, also, uh, the one hundred and fifty percent adorns are not super expensive right now. Uh, they're what? Holy shit! Okay, well these were. <laughs> uh, I have uh, three of these. Uh, I invested into three of these. There, I bought them for two hundred and sixty divs today. 395 divs right now uh, at this time of night though usually because the like, europeans are typically asleep now and and some north americans too uh, that tends to be when prices go up so it might drop that back down again but either way they're under a mirror which is which is very good value um especially if you can get in uh one passive voices or two one passive voices uh again the value that you're getting from that each jewel can add you know pretty much just under 100 crit multi plus a, a variety of other things too so um, and they are relatively cheap to make. Well, actually very cheap to make given the strength that they have. Um, but they also have different gradients, right? Um, this is a craft that I think is a really good, um, really good for, for pretty much all skill levels because of, um, how much you can scale it, right? Like the adorned, uh, you can get it a 50% roll or a 150% roll, right? So you can get very cheap ones or very expensive ones. Right, you can get um, access to, to jewel sockets through very expensive means, like a one passive voices, or through fairly cheap means, like a seven passive voices, or just a large cluster jewel. Um, on top of that, you can also get jewels like this. Right, I, I spent a hundred chaos on this. It still gives us eighty percent crit multi, no implicit on it at all. Right, a hundred chaos, eighty multi, incredibly strong. Right, or you can get ones um, like do, 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 like this, where you just buy one with a single modifier. Right, this one had a single synth mod, but I didn't bother. Um, I didn't even bother rolling a corrupted implicit on this, just because it was. Uh, I didn't want to have to. The attack speed with bows is one of those ones I was talking about where it doesn't have a range, and I didn't want to have to pay sixteen divines to divine out the suffixes, or the explicits rather. Right, um, but it still gives eighty-two percent crit multi and seven percent attack speed. Right, so that's a, like a next step up on that gradient, and then you've got ones like this, which where where you've got. Um, you know, this one had two, uh, this one actually had global crit multi and tier one uh, elemental damage. I, on my very first lock, I hit 2% RMR. Um, and it's just so rare. Like, it, you know, it would have cost, I think, something like 80 divines to get 2% RMR again. Um, and 10% multi is not going to make or break anything. And because it wasn't a triple synth, if it were a triple synth, I might go for perfect kind of thing. Uh, but because it only had two synth mods um, or two synth implicits, I should say, uh, it's not perfect right so there's no point in like using locks till perfection um for this one i think uh, the entirety of this one cost me about 16 divs as i mentioned for all of my adorn jewels including the one in my inventory uh so for four of them i spent 20 divines uh but this one's pretty nuts 82 percent crit multi 12 percent la damage and five percent rmr um again super super valuable uh, and you can scale it in so many different ways um but um and uh, unlike last league where it was hyper unaffordable, I know that 150 percent adorned is pretty expensive right now. Um, but you're not you're not gated behind locks to craft these, um, and so I do think that a lot of people um, are, um, you know, overlooking this, uh, overlooking Morgan's value, um, and potentially, uh, you know, um, gimping their characters uh, unnecessarily. Um, boo -boo -boo. It's nice. You can also get really uh, well-rounded ones like this. If you take a look at this one, 25% all res, 10% multi, 17% life, 10% damage, right? Like this is one that I could just put on to pretty much any build, right? Uh, high amount of life, damage percent. Like obviously you kind of want a crit base. 25% to all res though, hyper efficient. They can just be really like this. This one cost, I think, two divines to make that one. That's kind of like a all purpose. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, just easy to swap between. Um, but I did want to show that here. Uh, it looks like I ran out of rare. Oh, oh, I got some more rare beasts. Anyways, for, for those of you, I know I ramble in my videos a little bit. Uh, I didn't have a script or anything for this. I've been kind of burning the candle on both ends here. Uh, I did actually craft, uh, the best mirror elemental bow in the league. It took me 67 mirrors to craft this, uh, but it is a hundred percent bested slot. Um, and, uh, I'll make a separate video for this. Um, I just, uh, I know I've been following him behind a bit on the content, but, um, you know, I've been, Again, burning burning the uh, candle on both ends here, just trying to 
trying to get some stuff pumped out uh, for myself, my guild, and all that stuff for the beginning of the league. So apologize for the lack of content recently. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think making content just for making content sake is super useful. Uh, the mirror bow will have its own video, though, and I'll, I'll try and get that out shortly here. Um, for those of you, though, that just kind of wanted to know what I was doing with those jewels and uh, some information on the craft, that stage of it will be done now. Um, just for the sake of uh, completion, um, I am going to load up on some rares here and uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we will do it until we finish that jewel. Um, I uh, apologize, I don't know how to edit videos, so <laughs> I can't edit out this part, but there'll probably be a couple minutes of silence here. All right, let's think of some fun anecdotes. Oh, here's a fun anecdote, actually. Um, I was chirping, uh, so there's a couple guys at my guild, uh, the ones that I make officers who help me out with the mirror crafts, um, like helping buying materials and stuff. Uh, sometimes they go equity, which means, uh, you know, they put in a percentage, uh, they put in money towards the craft and then based on how much money they put in and how much it costs, they get a percentage ownership of it. So they get a percentage of the fees. Um, but these guys, uh, some of them are guys that I've played with now for a few leagues, right? And, uh, so we've got some banter going back and forth. I like to rip on them. Just my communication style. Plus, some of them are European, so they definitely deserve it. Oh, shoot! Oh, be quiet! Oh my God, no! Oh my God, shut up! Oh my God, my video is gonna get demonetized now. Oh, I just accidentally played Spotify, and it of all people, it started playing P Diddy. Why P Diddy? Ugh. All right. Well, no more sulking. YouTube is the dumbest DMCA policies, man. If two seconds of a copyrighted song start playing, the uh, the entire video gets demonetized and paid out to the owner of the copyright. <laughs> um, I had uh, Spotify. Uh, I had sorry. I had Spotify um minimized there, and I I accidentally pushed the uh, the play button on my uh, keyboard. What a f that's irritating. Had to be Diddy too. Had to. Had to secretly fuck one last person before. Goddamn Diddy. And it was while I was talking about Europeans. Talk about a sour taste in my mouth. Classic Europeans ruining things out always. All right. Um, that's probably enough beast for us to finish off the craft here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry to finish off the little anecdote there. I was chirping the guys in my uh, my mirror crafting thing. Um, I think I probably called them sweaty neck beards or something like that. And uh, I think somebody was asking me questions about um, you know my real life or whatever. So uh, I was showing them some photos on my Instagram. Um, do, do, do. Uh, to just explain some stories, like you know, it's obviously when you're telling a story, having visual aids uh, can obviously. Uh, make things a little bit clearer to understand and uh one uh somebody from the mirror crafting group said something and uh, i was like man you know what would be a great stream would just be if i found out what you neckbeards actually look like sometime and uh so i could just roast you and it turns out the kids bought the trap all of my mirror crafting guys i, I haven't looked at these photos yet they all sent their photos in our private group chat on discord that we used to discuss our mirror crafts so as a special as a special uh, end to this video, we are gonna find out what my mirror crafting team looks like, and we are going to make fun of them. Hide your kids, hide your wives. It's getting sweaty out here, boys. The stakes have been raised. Oh, talk about content. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, it wasn't. Oh my god, it wasn't even rare beast I need. It was freaking Morgans. Ugh. Oh, also, sorry, Twitch chat. Twitch chat doesn't credit me with this because it's my stream title. But um, what's the polite way or the correct way of uh, phrasing this? Uh, like the politically correct way. Um, Twitch chat is um, uh, what uh, I, I guess like uh, fucking retarded. Um, and so they don't understand puns and stuff. Um, so my stream title is Black Morrigan is offensive. We're going to call him African Morrigan. <laughs> it sounds like African American. Black Morrigan. African Morrigan. Fucking classic. 
before any of you people try to steal that, I've already taken the character name. But uh, hopefully someone on YouTube finds that funny. Uh, because not, not, one, not one sweaty Twitch neckbeard has complimented me on my wit. Um, all right. There we go. The Black Morgans are loaded up. We are back. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. Oh, the lock's already on there. Hover. No bueno. One <laughs> percent cold pen. Ooh, I see one of the guys from my mirror crafting team for the YouTube folks just wrote in Twitch chat. Hell yeah, be jealous of my wife. Oh man. I've talked to him before, so his wife, I mean, his wife's definitely not a personality chick. Hopefully she's, uh, she's not a personality girl either, if you, if you catch me chat. Nope, she's got a great personality. All right. All right, guys, who's ready? Who's ready to bully? Who's ready to bully my friend's wife? She had it coming. She had it coming. She chose her partner. You cannot be cursed with silence. So you guys remember how I mentioned uh, earlier when we started the craft? These are the ones that I was talking about that you kind of want to avoid because they don't scale with the integer value. Um, but since I bought this jewel off of the trade site instead of manually synthesizing myself, um, it, this is possible. Uh, we, it would not be possible for us to roll that if we uh, if we were using the item level restricted. But either way, it still looks pretty cool, uh, but silence is not a big deal, uh, especially because we're not playing a caster build. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as you can see here it's a pretty seamless transition uh, rolling these though it didn't take much time at all i find it to be far less far less stressful and a lot more fun than the uh <laughs> locking them at the end of last league I'm getting pretty unlucky on the uh, distribution or, or the the variance with respect to uh, synthesis or corrupted implicit stuff. Ooh, what was a corrupted one? Uh, you could also just stop them like this, by the way, guys. If you hover, like if you don't, like you don't need to get a corrupted implicit for the Adoran to work, right? You could just get a regular magic jewel as long as it doesn't brick into a rare. Um, as long as it's corrupted, it'll work. And obviously, uh, for ourselves, we're gonna we're gonna get a third synth here, but all right, sorry, a third implicit. Ooh, 1% cold pen. That's actually pretty cool because it's got the cold skills. Uh, like that, uh, I'm, I'm going to skip over that one too. Um, that is a good roll though. I find the cold pen to be too specific. I, I know it does. It, it lines up like it's, it's, uh, there's some congruity with the, uh, the prefix there, but, um, uh, penetration does not work. Like the way that the, uh, the prefix works there um it's the, the tag right so a cold skill is just a gem tag whereas penetration is like um the amount of cold res that the mob actually has 
So it's not like it's not like a tag. So like a cold skill will get one percent pen. It's the actual cold damage itself. So you can have a cold skill that doesn't actually deal cold damage and still get the benefit of that, like on discharge, for example, or on Ellie hit. I mean, Ellie hit in this case, I do do cold damage, but um, you could even have like you could have original sin on, and that that mod would still work, but the penetration. Uh, does not work the same way because it's it's mod depend or uh, mob dependent. <clears throat> um, one percent alley pen I would take though, uh, just because it's obviously more universal. <laughs> Although because we're wearing Omni this league, um, not as uh, marginally useful as it was last league. Last league, I was using a simplex, or a, not a simplex, the other one, the two prefixes, one suffix. Uh, Twitch chat, can you guys remind me what the, uh, what's the other amulet called? A uh, simplex amulet, but. Uh... <laughs> Here, actually, I can, I can pull Twitch chat up. Here. Sorry, for the YouTube folks, I'll, let, I'll, I'll bring up Twitch chat so you guys can see them. Sometimes I feel crazy when I watch back my YouTube videos and I'm talking to Twitch, but it's for a YouTube video. I know most of... Focus... Is it Focus Amulet? I don't feel like... It. That doesn't sound right. Is it Focus Amulet? Doesn't sound right. God damn. We're getting... Getting pretty unlucky on the uh, the amount of corrupted pluses we're getting here. Two percent RMR would be the the best one for sure. A two percent RMR, also relative to its explicit value, is incredibly efficient. Um, uh, so is uh, the ten percent crit chance too. Ten percent crit chance and um, two percent RMR are uh, are the best like um, comparable uh, value uh, with respect to um, implicit versus explicit strength. Uh, like for the prefix uh, RMR, so mana reservation um, is three percent on the jewel, right? The prefix, um, whereas the corrupted implicit is two percent. And uh, on uh, for global crit chance, the corrupted implicit is um, ten percent. But you can see here the the synthesis is only four percent, and uh, the um, the suff or the suffix the explicit global crit chance is only twelve percent. Right, so ten percent out of twelve percent is five sixths, which which is what uh, like just over eighty eighty one percent. Right, um, uh, or eighty three percent. Sorry. Um, yeah, 83 per 83.3 percent, and then, um, uh, as strong as its explicit value, and then the uh, the two percent RMR, which is two out of three, um, but it actually because three doesn't scale properly with 150 percent with adorned, you end up getting five percent uh, mana reservation from the corrupted implicit, uh, and seven percent from the prefix, so that's uh, you know, five sevenths, which is uh, what like 70 percent, right. Now, if you compare, let's say, uh, damage percentage, right? The corrupted implicit is only 5% versus 10% on the uh, explicit. So that would be 12% versus 25. That's like, like what, 45% is strong? Um, or you look at, uh, what else has one there? Um, you do actually have the option for the ones with like the uh, curse, uh, reduced effective curses and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm not going to go for those ones though. Um, in any case, yeah, the 2% RMR and the crit are very point efficient. <laughs> Prefix is also just mana. Re oh, the corruption is worth with life. Re oh, is it reservation efficiency? Oh, yeah. Reservation efficiency of skills. That's a good point. Thanks, Gareth. I uh, didn't mention that. Um, yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, my God. Has, you guys, has anyone seen um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, the Da Vinci Code at the beginning, 
where the Opus Dei guy is like self-flagellating as a way for like, um, you know, to share the pain and penance of Jesus. Um, I think, I think I'm gonna have to self-flagellate tonight. I was corrected by Twitch chat. Ugh. My peak? We're over it. All right. Paul Bettany, yeah. Um, yes, sorry, that's a very good point. The 2% RMR, reservation efficiency, uh, it is not mana reservation efficiency, so it will apply to uh, life as well. That is a, a very, very good point. One I did not make. Dear Diary. Today I found out I was over the hill. I'm going to be honest, uh, YouTube folks. This uh, this normally takes me about three minutes to do. Um, we have got rather unlucky here. But do keep in mind, we are going to... Oh, there we go. Minion damage. We are going to be making fun of... Um, and actually, it's not just making fun of. It'll be my first time. Some of these guys I've played with for like two years, and I've never seen their faces before. I like to judge people on the quality of their character, though, right? You know, get to know somebody, meritocracy above all. And, um, you know, hopefully they're good looking because Jesus Christ, talk about charisma black holes. <laughs> so. We got that to look forward to. Come on, African of Morrigan. I do have a full quad tab of them too. Soothing left the chat, Jabelton. Uh, reduced ignite duration. Boom. There we go, boys. <laughs> All righty. Let's get a damn boy up in there. It's been a while since we've got a damn boy. Om nom 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 nom. Speaking of thick ass boys. What a perfect transition into going to find out what my mirror crafting team looks like. All right, quick recap of the craft. I already, well, you can just rewind the video. We don't need a recap. Let's see what it gives us. That is 92% crit multi. 10% crit chance, 10% damage. Let's look at our tool tip. 121,000. 102. That gives us 19. That's like 19% more damage. Oh, suck on my titties. That is lovely. All right. Now, for the best part of the video. Public bullying. Ugh, Trudeau. Gross. If anyone here is Canadian, Trudeau, aka the Janubu of global politics. My first artistic works going and standing outside of CBC while they were polling. Anyways, this is not relevant to this video at all. I am sorry, YouTube. Okay, where the hell do I go? Where did fucking Discord go? There it is. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right. Let's find out what these fucking neck beards look like, boys. All right. All right. So this is Zax. That's about what I'd expect here. His nip game is strong. Yeah. Zach's a pretty good looking fella. All right. Let's see where they start. Okay. Here we go. All right. Who's up first? Simon. So this is the, this is the Necropolis bougie boys. This is my group chat for the mirror crafting project. All right. Simon. Uh, Simon is my, all I know about Simon before looking at his photo here is that he's told me he is Asian, but he lives in Denmark. Um, and uh, all I've ever told him is that he must be conflicted by wanting to freeload and also being incredibly hardworking at the same time. Um, the pull 
Anyways, let's see what he looks like. Simon, open in browser. Okay, Simon. Okay, Simon. You look like every Asian guy I have ever done drugs with in my life. Now, hear me out. I don't want to say there's like an Asian look, but I, I live in Toronto, and um, there's like there's a lot of there's a lot of Chinese people or Asian people in Toronto in general, right? And um, there's like I don't want to say there's like innocent looking Asians. It's like um, maybe like more like conservative or like uh, traditional, like you know what I mean? Where it's like they were parents would be a first generation immigrants, maybe a little bit more overbearing, and then there's like you have like asian friends who like were like very like um you know kind of latchkey right they, like they were like immediately acclimatized took in the canadian culture just kind of like they like sometimes their parents like when you go over to like a uh, guy one of my best friends growing up was chinese and his, his mom would always tell him he's acting too white kind of thing you look like every and as a former addict myself you look like every asian guy i have ever done drugs with in my life that was like one of the white asians all right I'm not gonna lie. We look like we look like we could kick it. Although, although Simon, I will say this is gonna get me banned off YouTube. Um, I will say though, Simon, you know you should you should. Uh, God damn it. You might want to contrast your jacket and your natural complexion better. I think that's a. I think that. I think that's a. <laughs> See the pants, the pants to the jacket, perfect, clear, clear cut. This area, yeah, it's like John Cena, but he had a floating mustache. All right, next up, Simon. You and I look like we could chill. Oh, look at this fucking Reddit moderator. Oh my god. Who's this? Oh. You look like the first dude ever accepted to an all-girls university. You look like every fucking Democrat voting male in America after he went to his first women's literature class. I bet every sentence you type in real life starts with well actually. Who is this? The Zax. The Zaxinator. I can't tell if you're in like family court for this or if you're at like your 10 your 10 year high school reunion and you wanted to show the football players that you now work middle management and you're pretty cool. All right, Zax. Got, you've got some flow, though. Zaxy's got some flow. All right, who's next? Sir Free For All. Your wife's got nice cats. They're pretty big, too. What is that, a butterfly? All right. Now, for the guy on the right side. You look like Mitch Hedberg and Kurt Cobain had an extra chromosome child who did way too many drugs. Hehehehe. <laughs> If like if Mitch Hedberg and Kurt Cobain had an extra chromosome son who was cast as an extra in Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> All right, that's a character portrait. Wait, who was this? Who am I joking? SSFA? Was this an arranged marriage? Well, my favorite thing about about this photo is that you've got your belt on. Shout out to the homeboy. Wait, who is that? <laughs> SFFA? Eh? No, man. Congratulations on your wedding, though. You guys look absolutely thrilled to be marrying one another. 
you know, some there, some people say that it's it's important to find people where you know find a partner where you have shared interests. Some people like to say it's important you find somebody who hates the same things you do, and I'm glad you guys use that as a basis for uh, for the ultimate bond in marriage. On the plus side, you can uh, you can just Photoshop this for your divorce hearings too. Sir FFA, what's your last name? Uh, Manson. That's the only fa family photo I've seen. This Moros. All right, next up. <laughs> yeah, Zach's just exactly what I'd expect him to look like here. As I said, this is probably the one that I'm the least surprised about. It's got some great nips there. Just wanted to do some Mumford and Sons. What your mum and sons do together is none of my business, good sir. Oh, Tempest Mind. Ooh, okay. Oh my god, this is douchey. Oh, Tempest Mind. This looks like this looks like you pay to have your fucking dating profile pictures taken by like an amateur photographer friend who Google searched things 20 somethings like. Alright, we're gonna make you look super cool like an American party boy. We're gonna give you a fizzy drink, sunglasses so the girls know you're chic. And a pop jean jacket. So it says, I'm here! You look like you're a refugee in a war, avoiding war crimes, but but that that that's being transported to like a high school locker. <laughs> like Mr. Dress Up trying to avoid the hallways. Alright, guys, just act cool. We're gonna blend in. What is going on here? <laughs> it looks like you're about to pop Molly at like girls night at a country festival. <laughs> All right, who's next? And what's the next one? Yeah, I wouldn't swallow you either. All right, who we got here? Bean. Bean. Oh, Bean. Be Bean looks like actually a pretty happy fellow. All right. So far, Simon. Simon, I would say Simon's probably someone that um just based on appearances. And again, I know you guys on like a personal level. And, um, you know, you don't give me much to go on there. So I will base your character on these photo shoots. Um. I would say Simon and I would get into some trouble, right? I'm pretty sure that we would like uh, we'd have a um, a Mr. Chow and uh, a Zach Galifianakis in the Hangover kind of relationship. Um, but you look you look like a happy fella. If if anyone's a hockey fan here, you kind of look like Mitch Marner um, if he had Down syndrome. Like combined with um, a uh, um, with. Um, what do you call them? The uh, what's the actor who used to do Trump on SNL and accidentally shot someone? Um, Baldwin. You look like a Baldwin too. Yeah. But normal clothing, smiling, happy. You're outdoors. All right. You get the most normal one so far. Tempest is a fucking. You know Tempest is a freak. I don't even want to know what Tempest search history looks like. These two are into some weird kinky shit. Like, I, you know these guys have, like, a German dungeon. You know this guy has reported you to a manager before. You know this guy has sold drugs to white people. <laughs> and the Giga Chad. Alright, who else we have here? Oh, and we got Max. Oh my, okay, so Max is your classic, hey, I'm just here for the networking, gentlemen. <laughs> Max, you look like you look like your favorite pickup line is to pull out a business card and ask somebody if you want to, if they're interested in life insurance. Zach, you look like if, if, if Max, you look like if, if, if Ron Weasley married an albino chick and then their son worked in middle management. <laughs> I 
<sighs> Max's Max's card here was supposed to was supposed to have an about me. <laughs> Max looks like when you go to dinner with him, he tells you how long every suit he's had has lasted him before. <laughs> Chad. All right, who else we got? Bad Wolf. I 100% know. I You 100% know that this is him putting on sunglasses because he's not. Oh, wait, actually, let's see if there's a reflection. Can we catch Bad Wolf? Tell me this is a selfie. Tell me this is a selfie. There's. Wait, is that a hand? Enhance. In, oh, that's wait. There's two hands there. There's gotta be a tripod. Who's taking this photo? <laughs> um, you look fairly normal here, Bad Wolf. But look, back in my day, I was a bit of a lady killer. Now I'm a fat neck beard. But I know all the tricks. All right, every chick I've ever met. You know, when social media came out or whatever, they used to call it the big sunglasses trick. Or you, may, you might call them a butterface, right? A paper bag princess, all right? They put on, you know, they get the dyed blonde hair, decent amount of makeup, and they'd wear giant sunglasses to cover all their face, all right? Now, at least three of you motherfuckers have employed this technique, all right, you butterface bastards. Show me your fucking pupils. Look me in the eyes. <laughs> uh... Surfery for all. You look, you look like if the comic book guy lived in Colorado and decided to open a dispensary. <laughs> you look like if Jay and Silent Bob bred together. <laughs> My boy's a little stoned. <sighs> That's got some sick flow, though. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, that was fun. Oh dude, it's great to it's great to see what are, are you guys actually are you on Discord? Let's hear it, some of these guys. Hey, can you boys if you boys are all here, come on to come on to Discord voice. Uh just so uh some people on YouTube when they watch this back, if anyone's watching this point knows that this is all in uh in good spirits. But it, it'd be fun to talk to you lads too. <laughs> oh man, it's cool it's cool to see what the boys look like, man. <laughs> I already know why Sir Free for All the ne never remembers to put beasts in. Bad Wolf is probably <laughs> Ma Max. Like, if I need, if, if I ever need someone to buy me like a specific amount of crate chicks or vultures or whatever, a hundred percent, I'm going to Max every time. You you know Max has got like a fucking. He's got like a fucking old Palm Pilot on the ready. Sir Free For All is just... <laughs> Sir Free For All is just a dark, a dark dude, you know? If you want someone to run a Voided map, you know that's happening. <laughs> Tempest looks like he's tried to like lure Thai women... <laughs> <laughs> like lure Thai women to his apartment in Europe. Yes, I am. I am the biggest European uh, party boy. Look at me with culture. <laughs> Simon, Simon, for the folks, for the folks watching, Simon, have, have you ever uh, done illicit drugs before? You don't have to go into specifics, just out of curiosity. Uh. 
Oh, wait, did I just mute Discord? No, I didn't mute Discord, did I? No, I muted the game. He... Oh, he did a dog? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> si for some reason, like, when I when I saw Simon for the first time, I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, a a I got a very clear, like, mental flashback image. <laughs> he sold drugs for eight years. Yes, I sold drugs for eight years. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Uh, is Max is Max here? Which one? Okay, who's here? Simon's here. The free for all's here. Bad Wolf is here. Uh, who else is here? Is that it? <laughs> Man, this has nothing to do with this YouTube video, but <laughs> I don't care. This was fun, man. Uh. <laughs> uh, I sold drugs for eight years. All right. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I'll uh, for for uh, well, I mean, you guys all know what I look like, but in the bottom of my descriptions for these videos, there's uh, a link to my uh, my Instagram and stuff. If you want to uh, if you want to see me in my my heyday pre uh, pre poe for the the folks on YouTube. Um, I thought that was very fun. <laughs> I find that so funny. <laughs> Literally, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw when I saw Simon, I was like, "Oh, he's one of the he's one of the bad boy Asians." <laughs> you, you and I look like we would have done drugs together. Yeah, I sold drugs for years. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Is that channel for subs? No, this is my mirror crafting team. That's my mirror crafting team, guys. Um, but these some of these guys I've played with for like a couple of years now. I've never seen their faces before. And so I was kind of chirping them in chat. And I was like, it would be funny one day. Uh uh actually no, no, what it was, it was Zax. Zaxu. Um, I uh I sent him an email and um it was uh I got um like I got a confirmation back and it told me his uh government name. So I searched his like actual name on social media sites because I wanted to see what he looked like. And um I saw his profile picture was like it was like a um, like a, a mask or like some kind of anime sort of thing, and I was like, um, <laughs> I was like, you can never trust a, a white dude who who's obsessed with Asian culture, uh, you know, and won't show his face. I was like, you know, Zax is into some creepy shit, and then and then the the, the mirror crafting guys I was with were like, uh, they're like, yo, show face, show face, and then uh, I was like, man, it would be funny, like just as a tangent, I was like, it'd be funny to find out what all the guys actually look like, and uh, yo, to their credit though uh balls on the kids all the kids look at this as i said that i didn't notice they posted this in the channel they all immediately just started posting photos of themselves so now we've got some good content to rip on <laughs> uh that's great you guys are fucking the boys uh for people on youtube um the like last 40 minutes of this video had nothing to do with poe but um <laughs> that uh that was fun guys all right uh so yeah the tldr of the video though check out these jewels black morgan is uh undervalued uh, uh the adorned is also probably undervalued uh you can make some really sick jewels um league's been going well i have uh, made a 67 mirror bow which will have its own video coming soon uh like sub subscribe uh check out the patreon if you want to become a member and to help support uh, the stuff here and uh you know, leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment below, YouTube folks. Let us know which one. Which one of the uh, the mirror crafting boys do you think? Uh, uh, you know, do you think is probably uh, probably a closeted sicko? You know, were my were my were my assessments fair? They say don't judge a book by its cover, but in my experience, that's exactly what you should do. So let's hear the people's comments. All right, boys. Um, I'll see you next time, YouTube. I'll be dropping that video on the bow soon. Take care, lads, and see you next time.